It was a program that started in about 1979 in the Engineering School of Princeton, run by Robert John and managed by Brenda Dunn. I came in 1980 and spent 22 years there before I retired, doing things that um, <clears throat> sound a little strange to people, but uh, which are actually quite important when we're thinking about consciousness. What happens at the edges of what we know about with consciousness? Is there any real presence of consciousness in the physical world? So we set up experiments to ask that question and got an answer, which was yes. Not a big surprise to people who are interested in spiritual matters, but a terribly difficult thing for most um, mainstream scientists to accept or themselves take any time really to examine. Um, in 1997, I started doing something which turned into what we now call the Global Consciousness Project, which is uh, looking at the entire world in a way, uh, we're using our same kind of technology we developed in the lab, but now to look at um, a, a kind of non-local consciousness that appears to be um, a real presence in the world. Today, there are over 60 random event generators placed around the world. The numbers that come into the generators during normal random events for global consciousness are just that, random. Several hours in advance of a major world event, non-random, coherent numbers are present. A large spike in the data waveform appears, giving a precognition that a major event is about to occur. Hours before the November 4, 1995 assassination of Nobel Peace Prize winner, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, a continuous running REG saw a major spike developing, which peaked at the time of his murder, reflecting the loss of a true peacemaker and a man of compassion. If um, something like Princess Diana's funeral was bringing two billion people to think about the same thing and maybe feel sadness or compassion together, that we should try to see whether our machines, our random event generators, could detect that, could react to it. So um, in that particular case, I asked all of my colleagues and friends who did the same kind of research, please take data. We had several lines of data in Europe, several lines of data in this country, put them all together and uh, remarkably enough, or maybe not so surprising if you believe uh, the data from the laboratory experiments, we have a big strong effect. Um, uh, if you did the same thing a hundred times, you wouldn't see the size of um, change in our REG devices that we saw during the time of the funeral for Princess Diana. The September 6th, 1997 funeral of Princess Diana yielded a major signal in the data. Global compassion following tragedy of major world figures or world loss of life yielded the strongest spikes in the data. And on 9-11, when the first plane hit, I think that was 8.45 in the morning, the data started changing in an unmistakable way about between four and five o'clock in the morning. In the case of the September 11th World Trade Center attacks in New York, the REGs measured a warning spike four hours in advance of the first plane strike and continued measuring the ensuing events and public reactions. Deep feelings of compassion enveloped the world and a 50-hour trend ensued in the data, reflecting the profound effects of the event itself. The Global Consciousness Network has scientific data showing similar responses to many world events such as Earth Day and World Healing Events. Major earthquakes reflect in the data hours in advance of the actual earthquakes, showing that the global consciousness field is not limited to what human beings directly perceive. These uh, generators, random event generators, we usually just call them REGs, sometimes RNGs for random number generators. 
They're a very standard tool in the armamentarium of mm, psychic researchers. <laughs> they do a good job. They present a system that's easy to understand and um, one in which it's relatively easy to see uh, something that shouldn't be there. That is, if consciousness changes the way the world is, these random event generators constitute a very sensitive way of um, asking that question. Does my intention to get high numbers result in high numbers? And the answer over years and years of experimentation is that it does. It won't be enough to win at the casinos. They have too big an advantage, <laughs> but it's real.